Welcome back to MTD CNC North America, my friends. I'm with my buddy John, and we're at Omni Aerospace. I'm so excited to be here because they don't always let cameras in, so I am honored to be here with my buddy John. Now, when I think of Omni, I understood that they got started around 1994. There was a small transition and acquisition around 2001, and then in 2009, they really started to get into machining, like you can see from the Starig Echo Speed right behind me right now with these massive six pallet changer and two of them, although you can only see one at the moment. And we're gonna share with you guys the reason why John invested in these incredible Starag machines to help him improve on the aerospace that he does. So John, thank you for being a part of MTD. Thank you, Tony. Great to have you here. I really, Welcome truly to Wichita. appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah. Everyone's so nice in Wichita. I yeah. love oh, yeah. you here. We, we're, we're just regular people. <laughs> <laughs> I like that about you too. Thank you. So let's talk about this beautiful Starag Echo Speed. Now, we know this is an investment, and not just money, but time and implementation and everything Correct. that goes along with it. What Absolutely. helped you make those decisions? So, Tony, anytime we buy equipment, I'm an engineer by degree, so I'm fascinated with technology. So one of the things that I wanted to do is I wanted to investigate what technology was available. So before I bought anything, Sterig was nice enough to have me visit the plant. I went to Muchengladbach, visited the plant, saw all their good people there, what they're doing, how they're building the machine, the technology behind the machine, and I was really sold on the technology. And it wasn't a hard sell for me because I understood the technology. Many times owners don't, they depend on somebody else. But at our company, I'm kind of the chief technology officer besides just being the CEO. So it's very important for me to make sure that we're choosing the best technology. And with Starag, I believe we did that. Well, it's good to have a nice, clever head on your shoulders to go along with everything you're recreating here. So I'm honored to even have this conversation. Thank and it's you. cool that you got to take that trip. So the size of this machine, what are we making here? Because this is bigger than some people's houses, and you have two of them. And if I'm not mistaken, you have two more in the near future headed your way. We do. And so it's not a storm shelter, even though it could be a storm shelter. It's that big. So right now what we're producing is four meter by meter and a half parts, primarily aircraft structural components, bulkheads, lingerons, uh, various structure of parts, primarily aircraft structural parts. So again, when I'm thinking about the size of this machine, you talked about you're an engineer by trade, you're talking about these aerospace parts. We know that there's been a roller coaster ride in aerospace, but you've continued to remain successful. Did this machine help you do or create some capabilities that you weren't previously able to do to continually stay competitive? Tony, absolutely. So. We, we realized very early on that we were a small company and we needed to set ourselves apart. Well, we weren't going to set ourselves apart if we didn't have something really to wow our customers. And with the Steric Echo Speed machines, we really did that. They're a great partner. They helped us out a lot. We brought customers in. The customers were wowed. We were the first people in Kansas, in Wichita, to have these machines. And we had an open house and we were very open about it. We're not a company that's, you know, everything's top secret, you can't come in here. And various customers all over the place came in and visited our machines. Some of our customers keep coming back. Every time they get a new buyer, they want to come by with a new buyer so the buyer can see the new machines and so we can express to them how, we, how we're successful with this equipment. It's really, it's really been a showpiece for us. It I, moved us to a next level actually faster than we thought. We had one customer that next year is going to triple the business in one year. And some other customers we got approved for, we would have never got approved had we not had this equipment. Well, what's the saying? You can't be different if you act like everyone else or something like exactly. that, right? If you're not going to be unique, what are you? So this business is a very competitive business. It is. It always has been. And if you're not setting yourself apart, it's very difficult to be profitable. With this equipment, we're profitable. And we're profitable normally right out of the gate. Whereas sometimes in these kind of parts, it takes one or two years till you go down the learning curve to be profitable. We don't want to wait one or two years to be profitable. We want to be profitable right out of the gate. John, that's a perfect way to describe it because aren't we all kind of battling for that 
lowest price per part. We're all kind of figuring out how we can do this better, faster. And you've recently implemented this massive pallet change system that's behind me as well, these six pallets. I mean, they're huge. They're absolutely huge, but they allow you to do something a little outside of the box as well and run 24-7, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Exactly, Tony. So we were just talking a little while ago that we're moving to four shifts. Well, we may not need four shifts, right? If this is running perfect, we may be able to get by with two shifts and the whole machine cell is running unattended for two shifts. Now that's Nirvana. Now we hope to get to that, but we may not get to that overnight. But we're definitely moving that direction and it's very encouraging. If I can run these machines lights out with no one's here, that drastically reduces my labor rate and makes me that much more competitive. Well, John, knowing you, you're well on your way to Nirvana, and I know that these six pallet changers already go between your two machines working uh, very simultaneously with everything that's involved. If you have two more coming and the pallet changers, you're well on your way to Nirvana. Now, is there any specific stories that you can share with our audience watching right now about, it doesn't have to be the customer or the part itself, but a story about what, how something was being made previously before this Echo Speed from Starag showed up? Did it take multiple setups? Was it just slower in general? Did you have to put pieces together like a puzzle piece because the machines weren't big enough to machine in one part? Do you have any stories you can share sure. about what this Echo Speed's sure, done Tony, for you? Sure, I can do that. So one technology that's required now, and you're going to see it go everywhere, is what's called determinant assembly. And what determinant assembly means is that you, you're familiar with how parts are riveted together on an airplane, riveted or fastened together. And so the current technology is everything is just pilot drilled. And then from that pilot drill, you mate the parts up and Clico it together and then mash drill it. Well, what does that mean? That means that you have to Clico it, you have to mash drill it, you have to deattach it, you have to deburr it, you have to clean it, look out for FOD and put it back together. So the next technology determine assembly all the parts in the in the all the holes in the part are full size parts. Now at the assembly line, all they have to do is basically Lego it together. Just put the fasteners in, ready to go. Saves them a tremendous amount of time on final assembly. Uh, improves their quality drastically. It's just really the wave of the future. We could not do that with our old equipment. Our old equipment wasn't accurate enough. And so this equipment moved us to the next level. Even before this equipment was on the ground, our customers knew we purchased this material. They're smart. They know what this equipment can do. And they knew we'd be successful with determinate assembly parts. And so that's one story that's really moved us from the other machines. It was very difficult to do that. We couldn't get them approved. This machine, this equipment, we got approved to our customers' specifications for determinate assembly. I can't tell you what customer, <laughs> but it's starting with one customer and people that are familiar with determinate assembly will know that it's the wave of the future. And so we want to be the wave of the future now, not 10 years from now when every customer is requiring this technology. Well, John, to me, you are spot on. And if I could look at the camera and just yell in a very positive way what you just said and just, hey guys, listen, you know, one of those kind of things, you're right. because. Having extra setups, having possibly machines that don't quite have the accuracy as some of the others, we're constantly doing secondary work and third dairy work, if that's a word, and fourth dairy work, if that's a word. To have the ability to have something either complete or nearly complete in one shot saves us all that heartache and pain, and we can go straight to the CMM room exactly. and get it done, right? Exactly, done in one. Done in one is the mantra, right? And so some of our mill turn equipment we're already there with done in one with this equipment. We're moving to done in one, and so it's really the way to go. And the other thing is, we don't have secondary finishing operations. I have some. You can't ever get away with it totally, but definitely we're getting to where secondary finishing operations are drastically reduced. Love that, absolutely love that. Reducing secondary operations helps in so many ways, which I won't reiterate to the camera, because you guys know, you guys know what it's like to remove secondary operations. Something about this spindle I think is unique on this Echo Speed, and it's the combination of speed and power. You have 160 horses on 30,000 RPM, and I would guess that you primarily machine aluminum, or for the UK guys out there, aluminum, but aluminum. <laughs> they invented it, right? They invented it, right. Um, 
What does that combination of speed and power do for your cycle times and for everything that you're machining? So, Tony, we're trying to use it all, and that's as the owner, that's what I push all the time is, hey, you got 160 horsepower, you got 30,000 RPM, it's not there to keep it in the bag, use it. So I'm pushing our manufacturing engineers to try to max that out at all times. Now, there, there is some learning curve there, right? But, but we do use it a considerable amount of time at that horsepower and at that RPM. And, and Sterig's not afraid of it, and we're not afraid of it, and the reliability has been there for us. I think we put one spindle in in the two machines, only one spindle in three years. Wow. And so the spindles are very rugged in this machine. I like hearing that too. And speaking of doing something scared, growing up as an athlete, whenever we do something scared, that's when we got hurt, right? And you were running these machines like they are meant to be run. Exactly. So, last question before I let you go, because you're doing an amazing job. I want to keep you on camera all day long. If that's okay, we might, we might just stay here for another give, hour. Give me a so. chair, okay? <laughs> we'll get you a chair. Yeah. The last one before I let you go is, Obviously, this is a big machine. I've said that a few times. You've reiterated that a few times. Obviously, you have big projects as well to go along with it, which means the service from Starag has to be significant in order to support a project like this. How have they been for you? You know, they're 24-7. They're they really are. Even though, you know, their engineering is in Germany, they'll get on the phone at any hour of the day. They're, they're not hard to schedule. They've really been great with us. They'll bring in people right away. They know that, hey, this equipment's got to run, right? The price of these machines has got to run. But really, we've considering that this machine has been brand new for us and we had zero experience with this equipment, we're really doing good with keeping it up and the run, the up time is really good. I want you guys to understand what John just said here. Zero experience coming into it, but knew that he needed it, knew that the company needed it, knew they were going to reduce cycle times, part changeovers, everything that goes along with it, but new to it and are running it at a very high capacity and feeling very comfortable. So thank you for saying that, John. You're now, welcome, John. I'm going to bring this whole conversation around full circle to end this. Sure. You mentioned at the very beginning that you were pretty open with your doors. When you brought this in, you set yourself apart. You let customers come in. You let people come in and take a look at the beauty of what's going on here. The sign behind me says, our big, beautiful machine. If someone we're kind of proud of it, aren't we? As you should be. <laughs> yeah. If someone wants to learn more about Omni Aerospace, what is your website and how can they find you? Our website is www.omniomniks.com. You can find everything about us. We've got a nice, clean website. It's easy to navigate. Uh, and, and my contact information is there. And if you have any questions, you can get a hold of me anytime. Well, John, as a guy of Scottish descent, I would like to call you my Irish brother. I do appreciate you. I do appreciate this Thank conversation. You, Tony. Guys, I hope you've learned as much as I have today about Omni Aerospace and check them out anytime. It'll be well worth it. Thank you.